Welcome to the CodeCast Podcast. Real-world insights for your daily medical coding and billing processes. And now, here's your host, Terry Fletcher. Hello, everyone, and welcome to the CodeCast Podcast. Today, my name is Terry Fletcher. So first of all, happy Halloween. I know that some of you may or may not celebrate it or like to give out candy to the little kids, but I love this time of year. It's just fun. The little kids come around and they're so excited uh, to show us their costumes. So in celebration of that or in in lieu of that, I'm going to give you some of the top 10 spooky ICD-10 codes. Actually, how about 13 of them for a Friday the 13th uh, shout out? First one, how about R44.0 auditory hallucinations? Did you hear that? (laughs) R63.2 tummy troubles after eating all of those terrible candy corns overeating. How about Y92.828, other wilderness area as the place of occurrence of an external cause. We won't say what that is. Y92.89, scary abandoned house as a place of occurrence. Hmm. How about Y, or I'm sorry, X99.2, assault by sword or dagger. How about T62.8X1A, accidental poisoning by other food? Was it the witch's brew? F40.230, fear of blood. Yes, there's actually a code for that. A28.1, cat scratch disease. Black cat, maybe. How about Y04.1, a human bite initial encounter? Hmm, watch those Dracula vampires uh, f40.218 fear of insects parasites snakes and chickens so you're never going to be able to unhear that t50.3x1a accidental poisoning by sugar yeah we know that could happen r46.1 bizarre personal appearance what mask do you have on and then w49.01 Hair causing external constriction, initial encounter. Are you screaming? What is that? So that's just kind of a little fun we had there with uh, Halloween. There's another one that I just thought was really funny. How to eat candy corn. None of you or most of you or some of you may like it. I don't like it. I think it's terrible, but that's just my opinion. How do you do that? One, open bag. Two, pour candy into the trash can. And three, eat a Reese's peanut butter cup. So that's my um, public health, public uh, service announcement for the day. Okay, so let's get back to actual coding, billing, compliance, and what the CodeCast is about. So I've got a couple of interesting questions. Since we know it's Top 10 Tuesday, I covered half of our Top 10 with the ICD-10 codes. So the couple of things somebody said, Terry, do you know what the... 2024 Medicare deductible is going to be. Yes, it's going up from $232 to $240 for Part B patients. So make sure that you're ready for that and aware of that for 2024. A question came up that was very interesting, and it was actually a dental medical question. So I don't know if many of you listeners do are in that space at all. I'm not. A, I don't do dental coding, but I do, do dabble a little bit in oral surgery. But somebody said, "Can we bill a facility fee if we bring in um, the dental procedures into our office?" And I said, "Well, first of all, office, office-based lab, ASC. Is it oral surgery or is it actually dental surgery? Remember, Medicare doesn't cover dentistry, so they would have to have their own private policy." And you would have to be board certified in oral surgery if you are a dentist and not also a medical doctor surgeon. So um, there's a lot to unpack on that, that question. A question came up about we are doing telehealth and um, we started out with a audio and video visit and the patient, um, their video cut out. And so we ended up finishing up the visit with audio. The visit was 30 minutes, but the audio or the video cut out around the five minute mark. So what do we bill? Well, the first thing I'd ask is how much did you time the visit for? And they came back to me and said, we didn't put any time in there. Well, guess what? You don't have a visit. Medicare has been very clear on the CMS FAQ sheets, especially during PHE. They said that 
uh, you, you have to bill what it is. And if it turns out that it's primarily an audio only visit and they do pull the patient, so don't even try to lie about it or pretend it, that the video didn't cut out. They have been asking patients. I know the OIG has been knocking on doors asking that. Um, then you default to the audio and audio only codes, 99441 to 443, but those are time-based codes. So if you don't have time listed, then how can you bill for that code? So you kind of are out of luck. So make sure your physicians keep that in mind. The third thing, and this is something I was like when I looked at, because they said, can you just look at the record? I realized the record was a new patient. You can't do new patient visits for audio only. So not only did you have a negated record as far as billable services because you didn't have time, you don't now have a qualifying record because it's a new patient. Patients need to come into the office. They need to be seeing audio and video. So we, we have to be able to establish a patient relationship in person, which for until 2024 also includes audio and video. Now this la this next question, and this is kind of, I'm, it's going to be a quick one today. This one was interesting to me and it said, I need some clear information on annual physical, annual wellness visit. It says we have issues that patients come in for annual well exams, provider does a physical exam, goes over histories, immunizations, vaccines, but they are discussing chronic conditions just as far as refilling medications, uh, maybe ordering their basic labs just for monitoring, and then review. we review their annual labs, making sure they're fine. How do I also get an E&M out of this? Well, the question is you don't. And they were saying, how do I get my providers to document so we can get an E&M every time, a problem-oriented visit, every time the patient comes in for a preventative annual well check? The question is you cannot, it should not be a routine thing you do. Patients are coming in for annual well services because it's good medicine. It keeps them from being readmitted. It gives them better outcomes. It's monitoring, you know, a non-complaint, complaintive patient who also has maybe some chronic conditions that are well-controlled, well-maintained. They're just getting their, their scripts that they, you know, they would have called in and asked for anyway. And that is just well service. That's something that you do not charge an extra E&M for. And please don't try to for that. The patient doesn't have an out of pocket for preventative, remember. So they don't have a copay or deductible. And once you add in that problem oriented visit, now they have a share of cost and you open up all kinds of can of worms. Now, in rare circumstances or on occasion during that annual physical, the patient may have, and this is what CPT says and Medicare agrees, may have a abnormality or a concern or something significant enough that you now have to uh, kind of pivot to a full and complete problem-oriented visit, which includes a problem addressed, data points, and assessment and plan and risk. If that's not the case, and it's really just you know, assessing what you already know and they're doing fine, that's an expectation of a problem or of a preventative service. So please don't blur those lines just to try and get extra money, not only from the patient, but from the payer when it's not medically indicated. I see that happen a lot and it's not significant enough to do that. Um, and the other thing that I kind of questioned with this question that came over is that if you are trying to get this on a planned preventative, that's actually non-compliant. Remember, preventative services are is what you schedule, and only if during that preventative service something, again, significant abnormality that has to be addressed is found, could you then possibly bill both services? But the problem is, is if it's pre-planned to try to bill two services at the same time, then the patient isn't there for a well check. They're there only for the problem-oriented visit. So, you know, watch that process because I'm seeing a lot of bad actors in this space and that's going to cause problems in the future. So you don't want to do that. Um, you want to not only serve your patients, but, you know, be be heads up about that and, and be compliant. And, and the reimbursement will come as long as you do things correctly. There's no reason to try and find it through manipulative me measures. And I'm, I'm very much about not doing that. Our CodeCast podcast is also brought to you today by Decision Health Select Coder. Get all the decision-making information you need to code in a single online resource. Select Coder offers you the comprehensive coding guideline guidance required to code accurate claims the first time. 
Try Select Coda for free. Sign up at decisionhealth.com forward slash SC free trial. That's decisionhealth.com forward slash SC free trial. Okay, so I know we're kind of on a short leash this week, but I did want to kind of give you a, a um, personal tidbit too, what my Steelers are doing a great job. They're coming out, they're winning games and games we're not supposed to win, or at least the pundits don't think we should win. So it's very, ha- a lot of happiness in my house <laughs> for that. Um, I was a little sad the other night when the first game of the World Series that Arizona didn't pull it off. They actually blew a save in the ninth in Texas, won the first game. So I'm sad. I'm not sure the day I'm recording this, I'm not sure what happened game two, but I guess we'll we'll find that out. And the biggest thing for me is, can you believe that tomorrow is November 1st? It is unbelievable we are already through the month of October. In saying that, uh, for those of you that um, are around a lot of people, make sure you do get your flu shot. And um, so that because the, the weather is just crazy and I don't want you to get sick. I had a cough and an upper respiratory um, infection in early Uh, September and it lasted six weeks. It was awful. No, it wasn't COVID that I haven't had since 2020, but it was still terrible as it was. So the cough never went away. Also just another tidbit too. I'm finally completing it. I had to wait till that cough finally cleared up. Um, I have an audiobook coming out through NAMAS, N-A-M-A-S dot C-O, and it is for telehealth. So uh, we're just doing it as an audiobook right now. It'll let you know what you need to do through the end of 2024. And so take a look at that soon, and we'll have a QR code for you uh, when it's completed. I'm just about done with that. All right, everyone. So thank you for listening today. Make it a great day, a great week, and thank you for listening to the CodeCast podcast. For more information on medical coding, billing, auditing, and compliance, including how to hire Terry, follow Terry on Twitter at TerryCoder1 or visit her website at www.terryfletcher.net. Podcast producer Joe Kuzma, music producer Assassin Music. <laughs>